to this meeting of the Minnesota State Historic Preservation Review Board for the National Register of Historic Places. My name is Lindsay Dyer. I am currently the chair of the Minnesota State Historic Preservation Review Board. Our purpose this evening is to consider the nomination of properties to the National Register of Historic Places. As most of you know, the National Register of Historic Places is a federal list of those places deemed worthy of preservation. A nomination form has been completed for the property that will be considered tonight. The nomination form has been sent to the review board members and each member has had an opportunity to study it prior to this meeting. The owners of the nominated property, local officials and interested local groups have been notified of this meeting. All have been invited to send written comments about the nomination and to attend this meeting. Few may wish to speak this evening about the property. You are welcome to do so, and I encourage you to address yourself to the question of whether that property meets the criteria established by the National Register of Historic Places. These criteria are the standards by which the review board will evaluate the nomination. This evaluation is the board's only assignment. These criteria have been established by federal regulation. Copies of the criteria have been sent to the owners of the nominated property and to the other parties I mentioned earlier. A description of the National Register of Historic Places program has also been sent to them. The nomination will be presented by a staff member. Person, persons viewing the meeting remotely will be given an opportunity to comment. These comments should be limited to three minutes. The Minnesota State Historic Preservation Review Board will then discuss the nomination and, vote by the, and a vote by the board will follow. Should the nomination be determined this evening to meet the criteria for inclusion in the National Register of Historic Places, the nomination will be forwarded to the Deputy State Historic Preservation Officer, Amy Spahn. Should she agree that the property meets the criteria and that the nomination is in proper form, she will sign the nomination and forward it to the National Register of Historic Places Office in Washington, D.C., where it will be reviewed once more. The process is a lengthy one, but it is calculated to subject each property to rigorous evaluation. Before we begin, I would like to take attendance and ask members of the Minnesota State Historic Preservation Review Board to introduce themselves, briefly stating the role they fill on the review board, and their particular expertise. So to begin roll call, we will start with uh, board member Anderson. I believe is out today. Uh, board member Gladhill. Uh, I am present. I'm Bethany Gladhill uh, at large, I believe. Actually, it's with one, one with one meeting off. I'm like, what role do I fill? Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, board member James. Hi, my name is Elliot James. I'm an associate professor of history and coordinator of African and Black American studies at University of Minnesota Morris, and I'm one of the historians on the board. Thank you. Board member Koski. I think he's out today. Okay, uh, board member Lavasser. Out. Board member Mann. Uh, hi, my name is Rob Mann. I am professor of anthropology and director of the CRM archaeology graduate program at St. Cloud State University, and I am the historical archaeologist on the board. Board member Olson. Hi, my name is Steve Olson. I am a member at large and a professional civil engineer. Um, board member Sanders. I'm a, a member at large. I'm a, an archaeologist with a background in traditional trades and uh, rock art and indigenous culture. Board member Schulke. Hi, I'm Chris Schulke. I'm uh, director of the Otter Hill County Historical Society, and I fulfill the one of the roles as historian. Yeah. Board member Solomonson. 
Hello, I'm Kate Solomonson, and uh, I teach the history of architecture in the School of Architecture at the University of Minnesota, and I'm an architectural historian on the board. Board member Stark. I am John Stark. I'm a historic architect on the board, and I'm a practicing architect in Minneapolis. Board member White. White. Board member Worcester. Hi, I'm Mike Worcester. I'm the executive director of the Morrison County Historical Society, and I fulfill one of the positions of historian on the board. And um, board member Lavasser, I see your hand up. Is there a chat for assuming you're there? I can't hear you or see you. Um, but we'll let you work out those details. Um, so I am board member uh, Lindsay Dyer, and I am a member at large, and I work for the Minnesota Historical Society in Capital and Public Art. Okay, thank you for introducing yourselves. We would now like to hear from Deputy Amy Spong and the SHPO staff regarding any necessary updates. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, thank you, Chair Dyer. It's Good to see all the board members here. I missed uh, I missed the August meeting, so um, it's been quite a while since I've seen several of you. Um, I've got, let's see, five announcements, if you can hold with me. Um, before I start on those, just a few meeting reminders. Um, if uh, once uh, staff do their presentation with the slides, then we would just ask that when there is a board discussion, um, just encourage uh, cameras on if, you, if you're able to. Um, and just an, a, a reminder, everyone's getting really good about um, muting, uh, muting themselves when, uh, when they're not speaking. So appreciate all that. Uh, and then one last reminder too, uh, because this is a public meeting, we would just ask um, that for public comments, um, public participation, that we don't use the chat feature on that. Uh, so, just a few updates here. The, the three nominations that were from May's meeting um, were approved by the keeper and they are now listed on the National Register. They include the United States Forest Service Raymer District Ranger Station in Raymer, the Hackensack Conservation Building, and the Finnish Apostolic Lutheran Church in Embarrass. Uh, also, the Park Service has recently issued an updated National Historic Landmark Bulletin that provides updated guidance for the listing of those properties, and it is available on the Park Services website. I just encourage those um, who are interested to take a look at that bulletin. Uh, we have uh, some exciting news. If you haven't, um, if you don't subscribe to SHPO updates, um, or maybe just haven't been tracking, but we uh, actually this week and over the next coming weeks and couple months, we are launching a brand new Minnesota State Historic Inventory Portal, which we are uh, dubbing MinShip. We're very excited about this effort. Uh, it is um, going to be moving into production and launching. And it is uh, the, just the development of this application it took 26 months, but we've been preparing for this effort for several years. All of the uh, inventory forms of above ground properties, uh, the paper forms have been scanned. They, the sites have been geolocated, a GIS map has been created. And we, there will now be a mechanism for consultants to uh, update electronically inventory forms and also add new inventory forms into this application. So we're really excited about this. Um, as I said, it took several years. The effort was over $4 million. Um, much of that, over half of that was just in this organizing of our files and the scanning of them. And um, I should add that this also includes the National Register files um, are going to be in the system as well. So I wanna call out Ginny um, on the National Register team. She really jumped in and has been a tremendous asset to this process. 
um, subject matter expert and even had to learn about some technology things <laughs> along the way that she probably didn't anticipate learning about. So um, we also have had um, a lot of other SHPO staff uh, dedicated to this effort. It's, it's been it's been really um, a huge effort. So um, as many of you know too, uh, the Office of the State Archaeologist still maintains the archaeological site forms. Those have special, those properties have kind of special restrictions. Um, there's going to be some kind of sorting out, I think, of properties. You know, there will be some above ground and archaeological districts that will be um, you know, not their locations won't be specific, but there will be some very basic data um, available in this Minship app as well. So thank you, everyone. Um, let's see, I've got new glasses and I'm adjusting to them. Um, the, the next announcement, I think many, several of you have gotten uh, emails from uh, Ginny. Uh, six of our state review board seats are set to expire at the end of this year. Um, and you, if you, you probably know who you are, but they are board members Koski, Solomonson, Lavasser, James, Schulke, White, and Chair Dyer. So we're encouraging those members that wish to be considered for a second term to reapply with the Secretary of the State Office as soon as possible. Uh, the deadline for the application is the 23rd of November. So just to point that out, if you haven't already done so, uh, and if you're interested in reapplying um, to, to do that, uh, and you can feel free to call, contact staff um, for those instructions if you haven't had a chance to apply yet or reapply. And thank you for to those that have already done that. And then my final, uh, my final announcement is bittersweet. This is Michelle Decker's last state review board meeting. She is going to be retiring on January 4th, um, which is just coming up very, very fast. Um, we didn't count how many meetings Michelle has staffed <laughs> and, and attended, but she has prepared all of the packets, uh, materials, uh, organized, scheduled, um, all kinds of things um, specifically for the State Review Board and the National Register Program. Uh, Michelle was hired, uh, she started at, at the Minnesota Historical Society in 1981 and was hired in, uh, in the executive secretary position at SHPO in 1989. And um, so 34 years of being in this role and specifically supporting the State Review Board and all of the National Register nominations that have come through the SHPO office during that time. Um, she's usually behind the scenes. Uh, <laughs> I don't, do you have your camera on right now, Michelle? I don't think you do. Oh yeah, you do, there you are, okay. Yeah, I have my camera on, yep. Yeah, there you are, thank you. Um, she told us this morning she's not one to look back. She's looking forward, is excited um, for this next chapter, and her 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 thing she's going to miss the most is uh, writing minutes. <laughs> the minutes. Um, yes, thank you, Amy. Sure. It's it's been a pleasure, and I was going to ask Ginny, but I was going to wait until Minship launches uh, live. Actually, how many properties have been listed in that amount of time? So we'll we'll figure that out eventually. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. All right, National Register team. I I was remiss in introducing everyone. Um, uh, myself, Amy Spong, uh, Deputy Shippo, we have Ginny Way, uh, Michelle Decker, and David Mather are all joining in as part of our National Register Shippo team. So I will hand it over, Chair Dyer. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is the review of the minutes from the August 15th, 2023 meeting. Um, are there any corrections to the distributed minutes? 
don't see any hands raised. Um, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Member Schulte, thank you. Board member Stokes, Stark, second. Thank you. Um, we will now vote by roll call to approve the minutes. Starting with uh, board member Gladhill. Aye. Thank you. Board member James. Aye. The Vassar. We'll come back to you. Um, board member Mann. Aye. Thank you. Board member Olson. Aye. Board member Sanders. Aye. Board member Schulke. Aye. Board member Solomonson. Aye. Board member Stark. Aye. Board member Worcester. Aye. And one more for Lavasser. There you are. Okay, I think that was a yay. <laughs> All right, minutes have been approved. Thank you, everybody. Hi. Thank you. I'm having trouble getting connected here. All right, now we move on to the presentation of the nomination with some instructions. For our nomination this evening, we are going to use the following format. There will be a staff, a staff presentation of the nomination followed by a summary of correspondence received. At that point, I will then invite and call on those who would like to speak about the specific property. We ask that you use the chat function or uh, if you are unable to access the chat, raise your hand and indicate that you wish to speak. In an update to that, I believe Amy requested that we just uh, or go the chat if possible uh, tonight. So um, please uh, do not use the chat function for any other purpose. For those wishing to speak, we'd ask that you keep your comments to three minutes. So our first and only nomination this evening is district number 99 school in Hennepin County presented by Ginny Way. Thank you, Ginny. Thank you, Chair Dyer. Hold with me one second. I will share my screen. That should be sharing. Please let me know if you have trouble seeing it. Looks good, Jimmy. Thank you. Uh, so our first nomination and only nomination tonight is the district number 99 school in Champlin, Hennepin County. The authors are Lauren Anderson and Alex Young of New History. The district number 99 school, commonly known as the Dunning School, is located at 10980 West River Road in Champlin, Minnesota, near the west bank of the Mississippi River. When constructed, the school was predominantly surrounded by farmland. Limited residential develop began, development began encroaching on the site um, as early as 1945. Today, the area surrounding the school is largely developed with residential buildings. However, the school's historic immediate setting, a wooded lot with areas of open lawn, remains intact, and the school retains its historic relationship to both the Mississippi River and West River Road. At left is an aerial view of the school setting today. The building itself is indicated with the red circle. At right is a historic aerial taken circa 1946. Constructed in 1876, the school is a one-story wood frame building clad with painted woodlap siding that sits on a non-historic concrete block foundation faced with a field stone veneer. This is a view to the west, uh, a view of the west and south elevations of the schoolhouse, camera facing northeast. The community of Champlin is located north of Minneapolis at the border of Hennepin and Anoka counties along the west bank of the Mississippi River. Champlin grew steadily from its initial founding in 1859 into the late 1940s, when the population of the community numbered more than 800 inhabitants. Here is a view of the north elevation of the schoolhouse, camera facing south. In design, the Dunning School is not unlike others of its kind. The building features a simple gabled roof and a rectangular plan. 
In the early years of the school, there was only one entrance. A rear entrance was added later in its history. Here we see a view of the east and south elevations, camera facing northwest. Ungraded or common schools did not formally organize students according to age-based grade levels. Children as young as six were eligible to attend. The school year typically lasted three months, and in the early years of statehood, common schools provided only the most basic education, with classes for reading, writing, geography, and some arithmetic. Here we see a view of the south elevation of the schoolhouse camera facing north, and on the right is an undated photograph of a school class in front of the school building. Notice at the far right of the image, uh, we see that the addition has not yet been built in the historic photograph. Given the limitations of the 19th century transportation, early sett settlers desired schools close to their homes. In Minnesota, a group of five or six families could petition the county to establish a new common school district. These districts not only increased the accessibility of public education, but also allowed communities local autonomy over their own school. At left is a view of the schoolhouse classroom, camera facing east, and at right is a, is a photo circa 1947 from the same approximate angle. The first purpose-built schoolhouse in Champlin Township was constructed in 1860 in the village proper. Between 1873 and 1881, two additional schools and districts were added to serve the needs of children in the rural areas surrounding the village. The Dunning School, known officially as District No. 99 School, and the Emory School, also known as District No. 35 School. Only the Dunning School building remains extant. On the left, we see a view of the west elevation of the shed on the property, camera facing east. And at right, and I'm sorry, in the middle is a map of Champlin Township in 1914. The smaller figure at far right is a map of Champlin proper in 1873. Together, these maps show the location of the three Champlin Township schools. By 1947, the school was overcrowded and unable to handle pupils beyond the sixth grade. In that year, school district number 99 was dissolved and consolidated with school district number 34 in the village of Champlin proper. The Dunning School Building operated as a town hall until 1971. When, the villa, when Champlin Village and Champlin Township consolidated. The building was restored by the Brooklyn Historical Society in 1975. In the early 2000s, the property was further restored. Today, the school is owned by the city of Champlin. At left is a view of the schoolhouse classroom, camera facing west, and at right is a view of the entry vestibule, camera facing south. The period of significance for the property is 1978 to 1947. The level of significance is local. The National Register criterion is A, and the area of significance is education. The period of significance begins with the construction of the building in 1876. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a typo there. And ends in 1947 when the building ceased to be used as a school. My apologies for the typo. The period of significance is 1878, 1876 to 1947. For 70 years, the District No. 99 school provided children in the rural areas surrounding Champlin with the opportunity for a formal education. It remains the only extant building of its kind in the township. For this reason, it is eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places. We have one piece of correspondence from the City of Champlin's Mayor Sabas, who writes in support of the nomination. Thank you, Chair Dyer. Um, John, is there anyone who has signed up to speak? Uh, Chair Dyer, we don't have anyone signed up to speak. Okay. Um, if there is anyone listening in from the public, it would be a good opportunity to raise your hand at this point. You just give a second. I see um, Michael Bray. I see you on video. Are, are you able to unmute and speak? Thank you. Yes, I can. Go ahead. This 
Uh, this school has been kind of a, kind of a hallmark for us in the fact that we tend to we tend to have a, a, an annual ice cream social there and a fundraiser every year, and we definitely have a, a lot of interest in the community. And it is the only surviving uh, school in the three districts that once were in Champlain. They've all all the other ones have were much. Well, one was very old, and the other one was very considerate temporary. But this one is still in its original spot and generally pretty much pristine for the most part. Oh, and my darling wife tells me that I should say that I am the vice president and historian of the Champlain Historical Society. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who would like to speak? Okay, I don't see anyone else. Um, so, uh, the public comment period is now closed. In order for the board to discuss, may I have a motion regarding this nomination from the board? Board member Schulke, I will support a nomination. Thank you. Um, so, uh, is there a second? Board member White would second. So much. Um, next, uh, is there any discussion uh, related to this nomination from the board? Right. I'll I'll make a comment. This is board member Schulke. Um, I, I find this a really interesting nomination. I think it's important that uh, we have at least a few examples left of our rural schools. Uh, you know, I come from a county, Otter Hill County, had 289 rural school districts, and uh, I very few are you know still standing or certainly in the condition that. Um, the Dunning School is. I did have a question. I found it interesting that you know inside, uh, Lauren mentions that they had separate entrances on the inside for boys and girls, and there were all a few examples of schools that had actually two separate entrances built into it. And in our survey uh, in Otter Tail County, we found a few that had the two entrances, but by far, um, the one entrance. And I did not know, I guess I, this is the first time I've heard of that segregation. I, I found it fascinating that, that they did that. But I think it's a great project. Um, these are uh, non fairly nondescript buildings, but they are so important in Minnesota history. That's it. Thank you, any other comments? Uh, this is board member Worcester. Um, I, I was gratified to receive the, excuse me, the letter from the mayor of Champlin. Yes. Um, that they, they have every intention of assisting the historical society in maintaining this building. And that they are going to pursue some sort of handicapped accessibility uh, to the property. I think that's important. That a property like this. You know, just those buildings were just not designed with that function in mind. So I'm glad that they are going to look into that. And so that was that was good to see. So I'm I appreciate that. Board member Stark. Yeah, I think the um, it's, it's a nice example and it shows it's well loved and well taken care of. Um, so that's an important fact and, and what um, board member Worcester said too, that the mayor showing the support to know it's going to continue. Hopefully the handicap addition is sensitively done and checking with SHPO to make sure it's done properly. Um, I, I read a lot of the report and I was looking at shingles and siding and foundations and all that stuff changing non-historic, but I think what's been done has been sensitively done and in proper way to fit in. So um, 
good nomination and I support it. Thank you, board member Gladhill. Uh, repeating the element of this being a, a great nomination, I especially appreciate breaking out the various categories of integrity. It's clear in this process with the photos and the description that the, of the how it maintains integrity, but to break it out into each section and describe that clearly, I think really strengthens the nomination. Board member Mann. Yeah, I, I'd like to just kind of uh, pick up on that and agree that that the integrity of this site is is fantastic. I, I enjoyed the the photo that showed that they they simply raised the building in place to lay the the uh, the foundation and dropped it right back down on its original footprint. And so, as the historical archaeologist on the board, I would just note that that increases the chance that there are intact archaeological deposits all around that structure. And so, any you know any improvements that they do should uh, probably uh, take those uh, below ground cultural resources into consideration as well. Yeah. Are there any other comments uh, by the board? Please raise your hand or jump in. All right, I see uh, no further comments. Um, the motion before the board is to recommend that this nomination is uh, approved for listing in the National Registry. Um, we will now vote by roll call. Those in favor say aye, those opposed say no. Starting with uh, board member Gladhill. Aye. Thank you. Board member James. Aye. Board member Lavasser. Aye. Board member Mann. Member Mann. Aye. Board member Olson. Aye. Board member Sanders. Aye. Thank you. Board member Schulke. Aye. Board member Solomonson. Aye. Board member Stark. Aye. Board member White. Aye. And board member Worcester. Aye. And chair votes aye. Um, thank you, everyone. Okay. So, um, this concludes the presentation of nomination section of our meeting. Are there any additional business items to discuss from the SHPO staff or board members? Chair Dyer, this is uh, Amy Spong. Uh, after my minship announcement, Jenny has offered after we uh, adjourn our meeting, if anybody wants to stick around, she's willing to do a quick little demo of the minship application. If anyone wants to get a little sneak peek <laughs> before it goes live, we've not offered that to anybody but, uh, but this board. So um, I just wanna uh, offer that and thank you, Jenny, for, for that idea. Um, and then just, uh, it, I do want to mention we, uh, the position to hire um, a new uh, administrative executive uh, person uh, to fill Michelle's position, it is posted um, and it does, um, it closes on November, let's see, 21st. So um, if anybody, you know, knows of anyone or um, in your networks uh i'm happy to send you the link just reach out to me and i can i can forward the posting but um please help us get the word out and how can we how can we fill that position how can we replace we we can't it, well, that's what we said we we can't <laughs> just michelle's not replaceable <laughs> That's Chairman, all. Chairman Dyer, uh, this is uh, Board Member White. I had trouble getting in, so I missed the attendance of roll call, but I now stated as here and present. Here, noted. Any other announcements? Okay, um, do we have a, mo a motion to adjourn? Board member Worcester makes the motion.
Thank you. Okay, this concludes the Minnesota State Historic Preservation Review Board meeting. Thank you, everyone. Um, good night. And uh, Jenny, would you like us to hang on on this call or join a different one? No, y'all can just hang on. Once the members of the public have departed, we can do a walkthrough. All right. Thank you.